Hello there, Dr. Ryan Scaffey here, Clinical Education Officer at Daniel Monitoring Paris. Today, we'll be talking about artificial intelligence. The aim of this presentation is to answer your most common questions. What is artificial intelligence? How does it work? What is it capable of doing? And most importantly, how does it work with the M and how will it impact your practice and your patient's journey? So let's go ahead. Now, if you're like most people, my bet is that you have none to very little knowledge about the topic. And yet, every time you hear these two words, we have strong mental images of it. Mental images of cyber soldiers, killer robots, artificial intelligence taking over the world and enslaving us. I'll be back. Sounds too far-fetched for a technology that is still in its infancy. So where did this come from? Let me tell you the story really quickly. When it all started in the year 1997, when IBM's product called Deep Blue beat the chess world champion Garry Kasparov. It was a historic moment. Why? Because it was the first time in history that a machine beat a world champion human, which helped propagate the AI versus machine war. And I guess from there, as film producer, they just saw an opportunity and it just snowballed. However, the good news is that you don't have to worry about this. Well, at least not for now, at least not in your lifetime. And we'll see why later during that presentation. So now, before we dive into the details, let's just take a step back and look at the evolution timeline of artificial intelligence and key historic moment that led to where we are today. The first thing that you need to know is that the concept of AI is by far something new. It started almost 100 years ago when the famous mathematician Alan Turing wrote a 36 long pages research stating, you know, the potential of AI in different fields. Well, unfortunately for him, he was born in the wrong era as he was way ahead of his curve. Then, the first time there was a concrete try of doing something solid with it happened in 1958 with a group of PhD students at Stanford University. They developed what is called Perceptron, which is the first single neural network layer. Unfortunately for them as well, they were born in the wrong era because computer was not strong enough to process the data at the time. Now, the real AI revolution happened in 1986 with an engineer called Jeffrey Hinton. There was two main reasons why Jeffrey was able to revolutionize this technology. Now, the first one is that Jeffrey said to himself, in order to mimic artificial intelligence, we have to understand intelligence and how it works. So he actually went and studied the human brain, the connection in our brain, and how our brain processes new information. The second reason is that computers started to get strong enough at the time. So what Jeffrey Hinton did, he actually mimicked the human brain, but with algorithms. And from there, the technology just took off and it led to where we are today. Using Jeffrey Hinton's model, which is called multi-layered neural network, the technology was able to evolve in an exponential way. So here are some examples of what AI is capable of doing today. We've all seen the self-driving cars, Tesla cars, right? And actually, uh, not long time ago, Elon Musk announced that we are very close from achieving level five of automation, which means the car is doing everything with zero human input, which is pretty impressive. Next example is facial recognition, a technology that was developed by Facebook in 2014, which is today revolutionizing many fields of our life. Now, some fun facts about what AI can do today. The first one, it's able to read our lips and knowing what you're saying. The second one is that AI has the ability to diagnose depression only from looking at your Instagram page. Now, what about the healthcare field, you might ask? Well, AI played a major role in the healthcare field as well to revolutionize it. IBM Watson developed an AI algorithm that can go through 5,000 medical articles, analyze them, and find new correlations and patterns. And although it was a bit overrated at the beginning, it was still a breakthrough. Second example is a innovative company called AliveCore. What this company was able to develop is what they called the first bloodless blood test. It was able to remotely monitor the level of blood potassium using data from the patient ECG. So today, this is what you have with your Apple Watch. Third example is, of course, the field of radiology, which is the most impacted by this technology. For example, today AI is capable of diagnosing breast cancer with an amazing accuracy of 95%. These are just a few examples to show the enormous potential AI has in this field. So that takes us to the next question. What is AI and how does it work? The first thing that you need to know is that AI mimics how the animal brain works. The goal is to create intelligent machines that can work like humans. Remember, this is what Jeffrey Hinton tried to do. Exactly what he was trying to do was to mimic the neural network that we have in our brain and do the same with electrical ones. The second thing that you need to know about artificial intelligence is that there's not one technology, but rather a collection of them. And the terms that we hear often talk about are machine learning and deep learning. So what's the difference and how does it work? 
So machine learning is the computer's ability to train itself through algorithm without being explicitly programmed. All you have to do is to train it and feed it enough data at the earliest stage. So in a way, machine learning is like raising a baby. At the beginning, it's hard. The learning curve is very slow. You have to nurture them, feed them. But at some point, they will become independent and the learning will become exponential. Now in total, we have 15 types of machine learning. But let's stick to the ones that are most relevant to the world of dentistry. So the first one is what we call supervised learning. Supervised learning is when you train the machine using labeled data and the algorithm will compare output generated with the correct outputs during training. Now the second type of machine learning is unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning is when the machine is trained through raw data, meaning they're not labeled. The algorithm will look for patterns that you are not aware of. A great example of this is a study that was done at MIT they were trying to find, uh, the AI was looking for correlation between oral diseases and systematic health problems. Now here are two other examples of machine learning application. The first one is called convolutional neural network. This technology is used today to detect pathologies in x-rays. The second one is natural language processing. What is that? Well, we've all seen Amazon Echo, right? How this technology can be, could be used in the future for the world of dentistry is that when the patient will be talking, the machine will be taking notes which can help eliminate the data clerk function of clinicians. Now, moving on to the most advanced form of AI, which is called deep learning. So deep learning is a more, more advanced form of machine learning is when you have many of these hidden layers. The more you have these hidden layers, the more complex tasks the computer is able to take on. And this is the kind of AI that dental monitoring uses today. So let me show you how it works and how it can significantly improve the patient journey. The patient journey starts when the patient downloads a DM application and then you give them a DM scan box, a DM cheek retractor. So the patient will take this with him home and will be scanning his teeth at certain intervals, whatever you decide so that you, the doctor, can keep an eye on the treatment. When the patient scans with his smartphone, the system is taking 20 to 30 pictures and here's how the system will process them. First of all, it will crop the images. Secondly, it will label them one by one. Thirdly, it will process all the information. So let's see how. The first one, what you're seeing here, are the raw images. And you as a doctor, you don't want to see the pictures of his nose and his cheeks. So the system will automatically crop everything that is not related to the oral cavity. Then it will go on to try and detect the teeth and label them one by one. Then the gingiva. And at the end, this is what you have. The system has detected the teeth, has labeled them with what we call prediction scores, which means, for example, the system is telling you, this is an upper left central incisor, and I'm 99.7% sure. But the system will take things a bit further by detecting different clinical parameters in the mouth. And that is very important because we want you to have a more holistic approach of the treatment monitoring. But of course, this is a lot of information to process and take in as a doctor. You don't want to know every time the treatment is progressing as planned. You only want to know when a problem occurs so you can take swift action. And this is where automation kicks in to make your life as a doctor as easy as it can get. In DM's dashboard, you have a two-way communication system built in. Following the AI's analysis, depending on what is found in the scan and your built protocols, which are basically your set of commands, an automatic message will be triggered and sent both to the patient through his phone application and to the practice's dashboard to advise your team on what to do. So to put that into context, when we compare AI automation versus self-assessment, there are three major differences. The first one is obviously efficiency. The AI is consistent, it works 24 seven. Second, accuracy. The AI analyzes the pictures at a pixel level and it doesn't suffer from inattentional blindness. The third one is obviously scalability, which is not possible if you're doing this manually. So that leads us to the one inevitable question that is on everyone's mind. How will it impact my profession? And will I be replaced by the AI as a doctor? According to world-renowned physician and leader on AI research, Dr. Eric Topo, if we take the analogy of the self-driving car, which is today the most advanced application of AI, and try to define at what level can healthcare be automated from a scale of zero, which means you know, you're doing everything, the AI is not changing anything, to five, where you have zero control over what's going on. And the healthcare field, according to Dr. Eric Topol, the AI will probably never get beyond the third level, meaning you will always be in control. You are the commander in chief, the AI is just doing, taking care of the mundane task for you. Why? Well, according to the AI experts, we have two main reasons. First of all, the artificial intelligence is not artificial. And the second, it's not intelligent. While it's true that AI is unbeaten when it comes to progressing huge amount of data, exhibiting amazing accuracies 
at a fraction of the time and the cost of humans. The truth is that it's limited to very narrow tasks and is not able to make sense of the huge amount of information it processes. This technological monster has an Achilles heel, which is emotion and common sense. I think we can be friends. Therefore, it is nowhere near able to perform general tasks to fully replace humans. Well, at least not in our lifetime. And so the lesson that I want to leave you with before ending this presentation is that you should stop having these negative thoughts and worries about AI, thinking that it might replace you someday or make you less humans because the truth is quite the opposite. Instead, you should realize that it's only when you join powers with it and work together synergistically that you become a better doctor and human. So with this, we reached the end of our presentation. I hope you found it useful. Thank you.